Where to start? A budget is a personal profit and loss statement or PL. You can think about your income as revenue and your expenses as costs, just like any business does. You need to make sure your expenses don't exceed your income. And at the end of the year, at the end of the year, and that your income less your expenses plus your savings and or investment equals zero. Essentially, what you don't save, you can spend. But please don't think about this the other way around. Savings should be the highest priority. And you should, you should contemplate what you need to save before you can think about what it's OK to spend. All a budget is is simply a means of managing your personal cash flow. A budget helps you gain an understanding of where your money is coming from and where it is going. It's intended to make you sure you don't to sure to, to make you sure that you don't under, overspend and that you save. When building your budget, you need to understand not only your monthly expenses but also your annual ones. Some expenses occur every month in a predictable manner. But only occur, but some only occur once or twice a year, like car or homeowners insurance taxes, your kid's school bill, the regular annual maintenance on your car, and on and on. Some additional expenses may occur less predictably or even sporadically over the course of a year, like buying new clothes for a new season or um, needing a new computer or a phone if yours gets run over by a tour bus, like mine did. So you need to manage your PL both annually and monthly. Um, we'll get to that in a little while. So as with most topics, everyone has an opinion on how much people should spend on broad categories in a budget. I actually plucked this from a self-help book. It's just one, um, one measure. Obviously, the amount of money anyone's able to spend is a function of their income, where they live, and how much it costs to live there, whether they own a car, have kids, and on and on. So people who live in New York City might have housing costs on the high end of the recommended range, but transportation on the low end if they don't own a car. Where your budget lies within these ranges is really a function of your personal circumstances. But keep in mind that at the end of the day, your expenses and your savings need to add up to 100% of your income. You can't overspend your income. Taking on debt is really the kiss of death from a financial management and cash flow perspective. I'm not quite there yet, Tracy. Thank you. Um, debt, quite simply, is a budget killer. So the first thing you need to do when developing your budget is go through these broad categories and add detail. If you're a homeowner, then housing costs might include subcategories like mortgage payments, property taxes, HOA dues, and home maintenance projects. If you own a car, then transportation could include car payments, tolls, gas, car maintenance. If you don't own a car, then maybe you, all you have to do, all you have to budget for is public transportation and a new bike. If you have kids, well, enough said. As you go through the process of identifying your spending categories, it's important to be as thorough and as detailed as possible. Don't leave any category out. You don't want to find yourself at the end of your budgeting process having all your income spent and have expense items you can't pay for because you didn't think of them. That said, don't get too bogged down in these specific percentages either. Your budget should match your personal needs. Just use these as a guide, um, which you will see um, I did on the spreadsheet, which I prepared for you all if you, if you want it. So now you can flip to the next one, Tracy. Getting down to the details on your budget is really the hardest part of all of this. You need to get a handle on what you need versus what you want. Then you need to reconcile what you need with what you can actually afford. Obviously, if you earn $75,000 a year, you will not be having regular dinners out at fancy restaurants, going on expensive vacations at luxury hotels, driving a Porsche, or buying your clothes at Prada. Um, actually and emotionally, the first step of all of this is to reconcile your personal situation with yourself and figure out where on the spectrum you are in terms of what you want versus what you can afford. Be realistic as you're defining your needs and wants. So once you've defined all of your spending categories, you then need to make a list of your spending priorities. What's the cost of your rent, car payments, insurance payments, the things that you need but have less control over from a cost perspective. Once you've built your budget, taking care of the things you need, 
then you can deal with the things you want. So depending upon what state you live in, a $75,000 salary, you might be bringing home $60,000 after tax or maybe a little less. So therefore you shouldn't be paying more than $1,500 a month on rent, um, 600 a month or so in transportation, including car payments and gas and maintenance, and the same $600 on food. So obviously what this means is that spending $200 on dinners out at nice restaurants isn't gonna happen unless you plan to fast for the rest of the, rem the remainder of the month. Um, next one, Tracy. So um, next is understanding uh, fixed versus variable expenses. Every budget has both. Fixed expenses are those that don't change that, that much from month to month, such as rent, car payments, or the money you save in a month to pay for your homeowner's insurance bill, which may only happen once a year. Variable expenses are those that are harder to predict, like a sudden car repair, or expenses that grow based on how many times you do them like eating out or the number of times you cut your hair. You can see from the chart that the more variable expenses you have, the, um, the higher the potential total expenses you will have. So you need to be careful about these types of expenses that move around. An easy trick is to put a fixed amount on your variable expenses so you avoid blowing your whole budget up. So restrict yourself to spending, say, $200 per year on haircuts or $50 every three months. A good way to handle this is to make a list of all your fixed expenses first and budget for them. And then start to think about your variable expenses and how you can make them fixed in your own mind. If you earn $75,000 a year and take home 60, you should theoretically only be spending 375 a month on personal stuff. This includes clothes and shoes, na hair, nails, gym memberships, and so on. So first, you need to prioritize each of those expense items. What can't you live without? Reduce your month monthly available budget to account for them first. For me personally, my gym membership would, would get allocated first, then my quarterly haircut, then the cost of a store-bought dye, then whatever's left I could allocate to clothes and shoes. If I had money left in my budget at the end of the month because I didn't buy any clothes and shoes, maybe I'd treat myself to a mani or a petty, or maybe I'd save it to buy a nicer sweater next month or that fancy dress for the wedding that I'll need um, that I plan to attend next summer. Um, by the way, I'm using the approximate percentages that I showed you on page six to make my dollar allocations. But again, these percentages are not cast in stone. Everyone has their own priorities and their own living situation. Next slide, please, Tracy. Thank, thank you. So of course, within every fixed or variable expense category, there are also both discretionary and non-discretionary choices that everybody needs to make. Non-discretionary non items are the things you absolutely need. But within the same categories, there's obvious choices that you can make that could really influence your ability to meet your budget. For example, if you buy a Porsche instead of a Subaru, not only will your car payments be higher, but so will your gas and maintenance. So you need to budget for that if you make that choice. Discretionary items are the ones where there's a choice between more than one thing. In the example on this page, I use manis and petties. Maybe you have a job which requires impressive grooming and you need to always have your nails done. You can choose to do it outside your home all of the time or only part of the time or actually no time at all. I tried to highlight the budget impact of this choice. The discretion is in the number of times per month you choose to go outside for this service. So as you're thinking about your budget, you need to make decisions not only related to whether you do things at all, but where and how often. If you own a car, you need to pay attention to what kind of car based on the total cost of ownership, not just the lease payments. If you need some grooming, you need to decide where to do it and how often. These types of discretionary decisions hold true for all, for all of the categories in your budget. You can get a haircut at the spa or at the barber. You can get a professional dye or do it yourself. You can live in a one bedroom apartment or a studio. Everything is a choice and every decision has financial implications. 
The objective of this, ep this exercise is for you to understand your own limitations and make appropriate decisions based on your own financial picture. Next slide, please, Tracy. So every budget needs to include a plan to save and or invest. Saving for a rainy day is a critical component of good financial and cash flow management. You never know when an emergency might present itself. I've personally always been a big saver. Every year during the course of my career, I received a bonus and every year that bonus went straight into my brokerage account. After I'd been working for nine years and saving my bonuses, I decided it was time to buy a co-op for myself. And because I had saved the money, I was able to do it. It was incredibly gratifying and liberating to have this kind of control over my life and over my personal finances. I had built my budget off my salary refusing to spend more even though my total compensation may have allowed it. I had set my savings goal to be my bonus each year. When my kids were born, I expanded my savings goal to include 529 plans for them so that they, so by the time they got to be college age, they, there would be enough money in their accounts that they could avoid this awful debt spiral that so many kids um, have to deal with these days. When they were born, I knew what it would cost to send them to college and I saved every year to support that goal. For those who don't get a bonus, some great ways to save are to participate in your company's 401k plan to the max. Most companies will match your contribution if you contribute the maximum amount, but if not, they won't. Another approach is to decide what your savings goal is and automatically have that amount set aside each pay period and put into your bank or brokerage account. Some other tricks would be to take advantage of, of low uh, mortgage rates and refinance and save the difference between what you used to pay for and what you currently do. The point is, some of you, you need to save some of your money before you spend it. This is called paying yourself first. And savings is a critical component of every, of every budget. Next slide, please, Tracy. So as they say, the best budgets and the best diets are the ones you stick to. Just to recap, using the broad categories um, of, of expenses on slide six, you need to drill down and make a detailed list of all your expenses. Then using the same list, you need to allocate your income to each broad category. And again, these ratios, how much of your, your income you spend on each category will be very dependent upon your unique spending and your unique personal circumstances. You need to consider um, whether every expense item is discretionary or non-discretionary and then prioritize them by importance to you. So you can really figure out what you can cut back on if you need to. And then you can figure out what your allocation should be just by dividing your total income by the, the expense you allocated to each broad category. And there you have the start to your budget. It's also important to compare um, the expectations of what you want your budget to look like with what your daily expenses actually are, your, your monthly or annual expenses actually are. One way to get a handle on um, what these expenses are is to use a single credit or debit card for all of your spending for a couple of months. And then it's possible to get an Excel spreadsheet from your credit card company that's sorted by expense category. Don't forget to find a credit card that has beneficial cash back or points policies though. You, you know, if you use auto pay for any expenses, you should also put all of those expenses on the same credit card, just so you have, actual, have all of your expenses consolidated. Um, so next slide, please, Tracy. So there's several online tools you can use to help, help you manage your budget. Um, they all cost money. Personally, I don't think they're worth it. Um, and it's pretty easy to manage a budget, budget just using an Excel worksheet. Um, so I actually uh, put one together for you all. And if you are interested in getting my worksheet, um, just let Tracy know and she'll, she'll, she can email it to you. The worksheet that I put together has two tabs. One of the tab tallies monthly and annual expenses, so you can see exa exactly what you're spending on all of the categories that you've identified. Um, then that tab populates the second tab, which allows you to compare what you actually spent to what your budget 
um, suggested you should be spending. Um, if it gets a little complicated, please don't give up. It will get clearer and clearer over time. My spreadsheet is pretty simple. And like I said, I'm happy to share it with you. Um, on the next slide, you can see that, you know, actually sticking to your budget is really critical. If you're not going to stick to it, then don't spend all of this time trying to design one that works for you. Um, some tips that might help you um, in this regard are listed on this slide. Um, sleeping on big purchases is pretty key. Uh, make sure you love them as much the next day or the day after as you did today. Uh, I actually just did this the other day with a set of dishes. I saw them and I wanted them. I, them. I've been looking for dishes for years, literally. Um, but I went home and mulled it over and called the potter a, a week later. Um, and I felt good about waiting because I knew I still wanted them. Never use your credit card to actually provide credit. The interest that the card companies charge is absurd. Um, you need, you know, it, 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 you will have bought an item twice over if you don't pay your card balance off within a couple of months. Always pay your card balance off and never run up a balance. If you can't afford it, don't buy it. Budget to zero. Whatever you spend, you need, you know, whatever you don't spend, you need to save. Um, pay yourself first, save before you spend. Stop paying for stuff you don't use. I mean, I don't know about you, but I, I must have three or four music channels, but I only pay for Spotify. I get everything else for free and I suffer through the advertisements. Um, plan your meals. The, uh, you know, the cheaper, the, it will be cheaper if you do that and it will also be healthier. You know, the other funny thing is that people spend more money if they buy groceries when they're hungry. Um, so, so, so go to the grocery store after lunch or after dinner. Compare brands while you're there. Maybe the store-bought stuff will be just as good and much cheaper. And last but not least, whenever I make a big pur purchase, I actually calculate how many hours of work it took me to make that purchase. Sometimes I shock myself. You know, it's just a good way to think about, you know, how much money you're spending. So, so um, anyway, that's all I have to say. So if there are questions, please let me know.